video as you can probably guess because you're watching it in case you haven't had enough of this six wheel drive ambulance behind me yet uh we've still got some more things to do now i'm coming back for uh, or i'm going out for about a thousand k trip to pick up a vehicle uh for my mother she's seen this but has decided she can't drive it but still wants a camper so we found her a little uh a little van that suits her needs and her abilities quite well and we're going to go and get it but it takes about a thousand k's round trip to uh, pick it up and this needs a little bit of work before we go away i've got quite a bit to do um and i also have multiple sclerosis if you're not a regular viewer you probably won't know that anyway um that means my energy level is pretty limited so in the time i have available to me I don't have the energy to change the oil and the diff oils and bleed the brakes so I'm paying a trusted mechanic to do that however I'm doing some of the smaller stuff like greasing all the drivetrain which I've already done because I use lithium grease and my mechanic uses molly grease so it's in my best interests to not mix those greases um, I've redone the winch and uh, recently I got into the electrics I ripped the ashtray out and I put this dual voltage meter in here, which lets me keep track of the 20, 24 volt system and the 12 volt system. What that instantly illustrated to me is belt squeak that I associated with fan belt was actually the secondary belts that run the 24 volt alternator. Because when I heard the belt squeaking, the 24 volt system fluctuated and not the 12. So, I did have belt squeaking on the fan belt, but I've tightened that up. In any case, I'm going to get the mechanics to do the radiator flush as well for me. Anyway, so what we need to do today, aside from cleaning all the junk out of the foot well, is get under the front here and tension up that twin belt drive that uh, drives the alternator. So, I'm going to get a few tools out and then crawl underneath. All right, one of the one of the reasons, the other reasons why I'm paying a mechanic is uh, in one of my attacks of MS that I had a couple of years ago, I acquired some brain lesions. Uh, since then, when I lay on my back, particularly under vehicles, I get nearly constant head spins. So this is not a fun place for me to be. And, uh, I own two Land Rovers and a Jeep. My wife owns the Jeep. I don't lay ownership to that. And technically, whilst the Hambo is in my name, it's technically my wife's. It was an anniversary present. Oh, but anyway, these vehicles cause you to spend a lot of time underneath them. Anyway, let's get under here and have a look. Now, this is what we're looking at. Now, I have 11A uh, 1040 belts on here. These are not normally the ones you would use because the air conditioning compressor over here, uh, no, air conditioning compressor is there. Um, it's either seized or missing its flywheel. Um, and there's no gas in that system anyway. So we're not using the air conditioner. I've used two slightly shorter belts, but they are A section belts. Um, anyway. These are a little bit loose, as you can see. So what we need to do is loosen that bolt and then tension off that. Then we need to put a bit of grease in this grease dimple. So, um, I'm thinking a spanner is going to be the way for that. I brought sockets, but I'm going to need spanners. And uh, as I say in the army, prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. I'm about to perform poorly because I had to get back out and get spanners. So, let's do that. Alright, we're back with some spanners. Now, uh, I have a 19mm here. I really love this ultra-wide angle on these GoPros. It's really handy for this sort of stuff. We need to loosen this guy for a start. Which I think is this direction. Definitely. Alright. We need to find another one to get around the top of that. Which 
probably strictly doesn't need to be the right size so I can just pull on it like that yeah where's our 19 yeah all right pull my firm up oh, and get hit in the head all right glass to save the day again let's flip around that way here we go tension on Tighten that nut. Alright. Yeah, that feels much better. Alright. Get the 19 again. I'll just give it a little bit of a nip up. Look. For the record, if you're not familiar with this, flipping the span around changes the angle of the head just a little bit so you can get a better purchase on things you otherwise wouldn't. There we go. That one is up tight enough that hopefully it won't slip now. Uh, now this guy, I need to get a grease nipple on. I forgot my grease rag, so I'm gonna wipe my thumb across the top of it. Um, where is grease gun? Now, it'll be interesting to see if I can get the grease fitting in here at that angle. But we will try. No, not gonna happen. But, I did expect this, so I brought some grease fittings with me. One of my favourite is this little 90 degree grease fitting that we can slide sideways over it. And we can fit our grease gun to the bottom of that. junk in the tip of the grease gun and we can pop onto that one. Let's hope we can get some grease into this guy. Oh. Ah, it's actually going in for a change. I like that. I think I didn't have much success getting grease into this last time. Now it's getting firm. All right. Oh, it's actually taking a bit. There we go. You can doing this with a hand pump. You can really feel it. All right, it's nice and firm now. Oh, oh I smacked my teeth for the grease gun. All right. Chuck that out on the grass. All right, I think we're pretty well done. I have a big wad of grease up there, but. You know, I can stay like that. Um, I probably don't really want it building up dirt and junk, but this is going to be pretty well on the road. We don't go through the, the crap of this too much. Um, you know, while I'm under here, I could probably just about affect an oil change, but uh, it's the energy. The other thing um, I want to keep an eye on is this guy. This is the power steering pump. There are some little perish marks starting to appear on that hose um so probably after the trip that's going to get replaced and there's some hard lines here that go to flexible ones i need to get to the top of the steering box at some point here and change the oil in that um let's change over here steering boxes over here i do need to change the oil in that and also adjust the gear mesh in that slightly because there is a little bit of slop in the steering and uh, it's usually from that bit or the uni joint on this um, on the steering column but uh, that is pretty good on this one all right time to take a breather while I'm under here and then crawl out now another side effect of multiple sclerosis is you don't really well at least in my case um, my c6 vertebrae was affected so everything from the neck down the sensitivity is a bit up the whack and with red grease like this I like to stop and make sure that I haven't cut myself and not noticed and it's pretty easy to miss when it's bright red grease like this so I'll take some time just to make sure I haven't slashed myself up I've got a bit of a scratch here let's just have a bit of a look around and take a bit of time but it doesn't appear to be the case this time so let's go and get myself cleaned up now if you haven't used these uh, grease fittings before it can be difficult to get off 
that's why they have this pick that you can lift up. Uh, I always like to give these a wipe down before they go back in the box. I tend to uh, not regret doing this later on. All right. But I think it was about 60 bucks for this set of grease fittings. It is like the best thing since sliced bread. Especially with uh, things like this guy, you can unlock it and get them in all those funky angles and go back around and inside uni joints and stuff. Great stuff. All right, Let's see what else we've got to do. All right, so one thing I do like to do before a long trip is just go through my toolbox and double check everything. Now I had a lot of crap in here, um, but I found some stuff I didn't need to buy. I have power steering fluid, I've got brake fluid, I've got grease. In fact, I had three tubes of grease in here. Um, so it proves I don't need all of that. There's scrubbers and stuff from the previous owner that I don't need. There's my micro burner I'll put somewhere else. Um, and there's this whole box full of stuff from the previous owner that while it's handy, um, I'm not going to use it this trip. Uh, now, I've got hose clamps in here. I have an impact screwdriver in here. I have a roll of transmission oil hose. I might pack that down so it's a bit more compact. Um, spare belts for the 24 volt system. Um, so I've got grease. Now this is, this is multi-purpose molly grease. Um, and this is the stuff I normally use. This is the UltraTac lithium grease. So uh, that's the stuff I'm gonna use. Um, I have my uh, breaker bar. I have a quality shifter never hurts to have a quality shifter that will get you out of most problems um, and this one has a scale so you can pick the size of the nut um, have a quality king chrome set the biggest one we can afford in there we're gonna chuck oh and these the barco set these are magic um, you get three spanners uh, but they're ratchet ring spanners that are reversible and there is a different size on each head so in this set of three, you've got everything from eight mil to 19 mil in one little pouch. Absolutely magic. Probably the best thing I ever spent. Cost me about a hundred Aussie dollars. Absolutely magic bits of gear. Um, ubiquitous uh, WD-40. We'll take that with us. The nozzle's broken off on that one. We've got a decent um, King Chrome ratchet, a quality one. These are excellent. Um, we've got impact sockets. I've got a spare one kicking around here. Um, now, that reminds me, I have a 27 mils impact socket somewhere that's MIA. I need one of them to fit the wheel nuts on this um, so that my rattle gun can take it off. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a long day. So I will find my 27 mil socket. And I'll bet somewhere rolling in here is the clip off that. There's the clip for that one. We'll put that back together. We've also got some long sockets here for the difficult to get to bits. We have a fluoro jacket, um, just really handy if I'm working on the side of the road in a camo vehicle in inclement weather. And uh, we have some utility rope that's really handy. I've got to roll that up properly. All right, I'm going to get all this packed in, packed up into the toolbox. Okay, well, everything fits in here, including the grease gun, although you can only see the hose from it. That's good. We will put this up and away and lock it with the budget key, which this aftermarket one gets stuck. I need to probably give it a bit of a tolerance adjust. Anyway, um, we've taken out some of the unnecessary stuff. Let's continue on to see what our other prep we can do. Uh, one thing I do need to do is top up the water. Here for a bit. I've got two jerry cans down here. I've got one with diesel and one with water. Mine's where I should probably put the filler neck in for the diesel jerry can. It might make getting the diesel out kind of easy. Anyway, I'll fill this up. I realize too now I've got to seal off the roof box. Um, I've got to, or rather, I've got to glue the seal back on the roof box. So while I'm up there, I'll put some other stuff in the roof box. 
All right, this is what I'm talking about with the roof box. The seal's fallen off the majority of the way around. We're going to try and arrow dot this back on. Filming this is going to be difficult, so I'm going to do it off camera. So while we're waiting for the epoxy to set, we've got a bit of cleaning up to do. Recycle the stuff to throw out. And uh, yeah, interesting stuff. The cleaning rags will keep those guys. Yeah, we'll clean everything out. And uh, yeah, we'll be back as soon as the epoxy's set. All right, so we're on the roof again and the epoxy seal took. It's holding on nicely. A little bit on here, which I got before it fully set, but that's all right. Now we've got all this stuff to put in the roof box and that's empty by the way, that's just a spare. Anyway, let's get loading. All right, so uh, we're starting to run out of things to do, but I've got my um, emergency escape tool slash um, seatbelt cutter. We'll probably mount that in here somewhere. Um, not sure where at this stage, but it can go in until I figure that out. Little baby fire extinguisher in here as well. Feather for the misses. Um, floors are clean. There's a little bit of water under that, but they're drying out. <sighs> not much else to do. I've got to go and get a 27 mil socket. But I think we're pretty well right for now. I think we'll just call it an interesting ASMR video. It's not really that. I talked through it. Um, yeah, it's just a general fix it up video. People seem to like this stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. There will be more, but I think this is about my energy for the day. So see you in the next one.